message because I don't want to wake up anyone else in the house but I thought now would be a good time to start the vlog and say hello. The theme of today's vlog, I'm going to be talking about waist and how to get a small waist or how to like tone your waist for lack of a better term. If you're new, welcome, hit subscribe and we'll get started with today's vlog and I'm just going to start right now with point number one and that is genetics. And while you can train your waist with training and food and all that sort of thing, you cannot completely outrun your genetics. That's always going to have a big impact on the shape of your body, but there are little things that you can do to help it. So we're in the wrong place? I think we're not far. I think we're six minutes. Okay. Nice. We just got here and there's no trails. Yes, I think. You see a chart. We see a go. I keep cutting my own head off with my camera. <laughs> But I'm up to my second tip, and my second tip, even though I'm not doing it right now, is fasted cardio, because you do actually have to lose weight to get that like trim waist look that you're after. So a good way to do that is fasted cardio in the morning. So before you have your breakfast, either go for a walk, a run, or do a little hit circuit or something. That will get your body firing, and it will start to burn through the fat stores. So that is my second tip for you. Very good point. It's so mm -hmm. huh. I wonder if that's the easier path on the other side. Like, as soon as you get to there, it steps again. But it's getting to there. Oh, nope. I don't know. Let's watch them. Cause yeah, this is so slippery going down. So we're just working it out. I mean like... It's easier over this side. Is it? Yeah. Some people go there cause it's easier to start with, but then it's really hard to get across there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, and then I'm like, how do you get down? <laughs> oh, the opposite way better. So hold the rock here. Yeah. So see everyone's hand holds up. And then you put one leg there and grab this branch. Ah. So it's pretty easy. We can do that. dying on the side of a mountain. I need to be my third tip which is to be drinking lots of water. So no filling up on like sugary soft drinks. Um, I try to ditch the coffee altogether as well because in some people that can cause issues with adrenal glands when your adrenal glands aren't working properly it can cause your cortisol to be messed up which can cause you to store fat especially around your midsection. Try to drink water as much as possible or tea is like herbal tea is also a good option as well. Water is also going to make you feel fuller for longer and if you drink water before all of your meals it's really going to aid in your digestion. When your digestion is working properly it means that you're less likely to be bloated as well. So we're apparently what like 10-15 minutes? minutes away from the top at those ladies pace they're killing it apparently they walk this mountain like every day every second yeah, day pretty much and here I am just like oh. but I want to get to the top because I got a drone and I want to fly the drone and I want to get some drone footage that's really that's the reason yeah set yourself workout goals. <laughs> <laughs> fly your drone at the top <laughs> of the mountain <laughs> But it's so windy. Ready? 
and dirt. Oh my goodness. That was good though. Yeah, it was. It was way too windy to do the drone on top of the mountain, so we're gonna try and find an open area, like a beach or something, because we're up the Sunshine Coast. So there should be something in an accessible area. Making a lot of amateur moves today. Didn't download the app, thought it'd be fine to download on the way. No. So the next tip that I'm showing you that I'm going to cut into this are exercises that are great to do to work your abs and really create a nice sculpted hourglass sort of shape. of different exercises when it does come to your routine but there are some ab exercises that I like to do a lot less than others. When it comes to exercise I think it's great to have a healthy balance so in my whole uh, schedule for the week I like to incorporate low intensity cardio, high intensity cardio and also two kinds of weight training so training for strength but then also training to sculpt or for size so I like to mix them both into the training session so heavy weights and low reps, but then also incorporating lots of high reps but low weights just to make sure that I'm working all my muscles in different ways. When it does come to abs and obliques though, there are some exercises that you can do which will overdevelop your obliques. This is great if you're wanting to widen that mid area a little bit and I found a lot of these sort of exercises are exercises that get recommended for especially male bodybuilders who want to help. They of course need a, a tapered narrow waist as well, but just to help sculpt that area out a little bit. These are the kind of exercises that you would do. So these are the exercises that I would never really incorporate into a training routine when it does come to a woman who is looking to get that nice tight waist. Now I just want to talk about posture quickly as well. If you are having a bad posture all the time, so if side on your shoulders are slumped like this, it's going to really stick your belly out and you're not going to look as lean through here. If you pull your shoulders back, stand up straight, you can see that that just pulls everything a lot tighter. And it's also great, like if you stand up shoulders back, making sure that there's like a straight sort of line through your neck here, it's also gonna make you turn on your abs a lot more and you're really, really gonna work them all throughout the day instead of standing slumped over like this. I'm sorry if this vlog feels a little all over the place, but I wanted to give you guys my tips and also share it in like a vlog sort of format so that my vlog had a little bit of a theme to it. Um, just something that I wanted to trial. Now I have one last point that I want to make and that is to ditch the processed and sugary snacks and also just processed in general. So I'm talking like instead of white bread, switch to your whole grain breads, not multigrain, not rye because they're usually dyed, but whole grain is what you want to be looking for. Instead of buying like packets of chips, you can make your own healthy versions. There's so many healthy like sweets recipes as well that you don't need to go and buy like chocolate bars and stuff like that. And one thing that I found has helped a lot has just been completely quitting sugar because it means I don't even have that craving anymore to go and get that kind of food. 
Now that's not for everyone and I'm not saying that you have to do that. It's just the way that I live my lifestyle and the kind of methodology that I like to preach because I believe in looking after yourself the best possible, whether that means like cutting down from a lot of junk food to just like a couple of cheat meals a week or whether it means like going and doing what I'm doing at the moment where I just haven't eaten sugar or most carbohydrates for like six or seven months now it's just been a while so so try and ditch those processed and sugary snacks because they are not going to be helping your midsection at all and especially if you have food intolerances or anything like that you might not know that you have a gluten intolerance you might not know that you have a fructose intolerance there's so many things out there and they can be causing you to get bloating after your meals at the end of the day as well a small waist is currently something that's just in fashion you know there has been the thigh brows the thigh gap the huge booty that's like most girls don't even have they just pose a certain way in their photographs so i'm just saying remember that these trends come and go and you need to find a way to be comfortable in your own skin if it means that you've got a small waist and you can rock that then awesome and if it means that you don't have a small waist but you've got like amazing legs or something like that then rock that Trends change, clothing trends change, and even body trends change. The shape that was in fashion 20 years ago is not in fashion now. And while I am giving you these tips, I like to think that none of them are unreasonable. I'm not telling you to go out and purchase a waist trainer, which isn't gonna do anything for you anyway. I'm not hocking you off any supplements or products telling you that they're gonna give you these miraculous results. It's all about hard work, dedication, and just making the right choices. Choose long-term gratification over short-term. Think to yourself, in six months time, is this gonna help you get any closer to your goal or is it something that you just want right now? And that doesn't have to just apply to food, that can apply to everything in life. Whether it means you're just slothing out for the day when you're meant to be working quite hard, is that gonna help you get to that six month goal? And when it does come to food, is it something that you know is nourishing your body? Or is it just something that you're eating out of boredom or because you're feeling a certain kind of way? So you really need to assess that and concentrate on that long-term goal. I talk with my hands a lot. If you've been here for a while, you probably know that. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are well. I'm going to end the vlog here, and I'm sorry, it's a little bit messy and all over the place, but honestly, I feel like I need 20 showers. It's just, I feel so gross. I'm getting my hair done tomorrow, but I feel like I need to wash my hair before I go and get my hair done. I'll catch you in the comments below or in my next video, or I'm far more active on Instagram, so you guys can find me on there as well. See you guys.